everyone, and welcome back to the next session of the Trainerize Collective. We're really excited because in this session, we're talking all things marketing, social media, AI, and everything that you need to know to grow your business in 2023 and 2024. So today we're joined by some very special guests. We have Harry King Holmes and Ruben Brooks with us, and we're just going to have a nice conversation about all the things you need to be doing this year to grow your business. So thank you guys so much for joining us, first of all. Oh, yeah. Appreciate Thanks for having me. Of yeah. course. Happy to have you. So before we kind of dive into it, I'd love to give you each just the opportunity to tell the audience a little bit more about who you are, what you do, and uh, just kind of introduce yourself. So Harry, would you like to begin? Sure, let's do it. Yeah. My name is Harry King Holmes. Um, you can find me, Harry King Holmes, on all platforms. Uh, we service personal trainers and fitness coaches. We show them how to transition their business 100% online or in a hybrid model. Um, and enroll online coaching clients at a thousand to three thousand dollars every single month. Amazing. Uh, and Ruben, would you like to go next? Yeah. What's up, everyone? My name is Coach Ruben Brooks. I'm the founder of the Fit Boss Blueprint online coaching program, where we help personal trainers and fitness coaches take their business online and scale their business to six figures within six months or less. And I also just want to give you a shout out because I know this year you had your first six figure month, and I know it will not be your last. So no. Thank you. That's yeah, that was just the first one. We had a couple more, not to toot my own horn or anything, but. No. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Thank cool. You. Okay. So starting with the questions, you guys obviously both help personal trainers build their own businesses. So let's assume that everybody in this call attending this event they have the basics down, you know, they know their niche. They have been doing this for a while. They have some clients, like they have the fundamentals, but what is the next piece that you guys would suggest for like growth? Like what comes after that? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Who wants Harry, to would you like off? to go first? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. So when we talk about growth, like it's, it's, it's two things we want to grow. We talk about like revenue, right? We want to grow uh, the new revenue that we bring into the business. Right. And then we want to grow the money, that uh, the monthly recurrent revenue, right? Because the last thing we want to do is have new clients coming in and then clients are turning out, right? So what I, what I like to tell people is like, let's look at the data, right? So if you already have clients, you're already coaching clients and you're getting some clients with social media, like for example, I was talking to a, um, I was talking to a young lady yesterday, right? And she was like, you know, hey, I had 20 calls this entire year. And I'm like, okay, well, how many did you close out of those calls? She's like, well, I closed like eight, I closed like nine. Like, okay, like those conversions are good, but now what we want to do is we want to bridge that gap. Instead of you having to get those 20 calls uh, within 12 months, right? Let's get you on 20 calls in a month or let's get you on 20 calls in two months, right? So we want to, that's one thing that we want to look at as far as growing. We want to grow. How can we get you new clients much, much faster instead of having you get, you know, 10 to eight clients, you know, within a 12 month period, right? And then of course, in order to keep the clients, what do we need? We need a good service. You get what I'm saying? And when we talk about online coaching, right, like that's exactly what it is. It's coaching, right? Like it's not like you're creating this, you know, little PDF or even just creating, you know, a master program on Trainerage and say, hey, all right, there's your program. You're on your own. These clients, they need accountability. <laughs> they need these touch points. They need the coaching, right? So that's what you want to focus on as far as growing the monthly recurring revenue. And also I would say is not just solving like one problem on the front end, solving another problem on the back end, right? Because maybe like these clients are coming to you and just say you help, you know, busy moms, busy career moms, you know, lose 20 to 40 pounds, you know, without going to the gym. So when they first start working with you, they're doing some stuff in, at the house, you no know, weights and stuff like that. But as we know, over, you know, three or three months or so, they're going to plateau. They're going to need to incorporate, you know, some, uh, you know, some weight, some more, you know, resistance training, you know, tweak their calories a little bit. Right. So instead of them, you know, falling off and going to somebody else to get some more weight training, they can continue to work with you and continue to pay you, you know, every single month so that you can continue to grow your new revenue on the front end and the new revenue on the back end, the monthly recurring revenue on the back end. Cool. So, yeah, like what I'm hearing from that is is basically thinking about your marketing, not just as like you're making content and putting yourself out there in the world just for the sake of that, but you're then wanting to convert those people into the sales call to get them in that funnel. Yeah. Um, Ruben, I'm going to pass the mic to you to continue. Yeah, that was excellent. I actually just want to pick up on where Harry left off. I believe that business and fitness are so similarly related 
similarly, I have such a hard time saying that word, similarly <laughs> related, um, because just how we have to keep our clients accountable, I believe that the fitness coach, the entrepreneur, also needs to be held at a higher level of accountability when it comes to scaling and growing their business as well. If we are assuming that they do know the foundations, they already know their niche, they know how to make calls, they know how to get on the phone and close deals, et cetera, the next step is doubling down on what you know and setting bigger goals and hitting them, right? Setting monthly goals, weekly goals, daily goals. And just like Carrie said, it's coming back to the data and now measuring yourself against your own data on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis. This is how you're going to become more skillful as the entrepreneur because your character is growing. Because once you see that you're holding yourself to accountable to your own numbers and to your own goals, your personal self-esteem and confidence will grow. And I believe that once that grows, that will, that will maximize growth over the whole business as well. Most definitely. Mm, that's uh, a good point. So uh, on the flip side of that, kind of the stages for growth, what are some of the biggest mistakes you see people making and how do they course correct? Mm. So Ruben, do you want to start on that one? Yeah. You know what? I'll just continue to follow this analogy with fitness coaches or fitness clients and also fitness coaches who are in this space. Um, the biggest mistake that I see after somebody does know the fundamentals of business is accountability. Mm. That's it. Just yeah. like clients can know exactly how many macros they need to eat. They know exactly what they should be eating. But yet every single weekend, they fumble mm -hmm. the ball, right? And they get back on track on Monday. Fitness coaches also are kind of the same way, especially yeah. when they're not being held accountable or no one's looking over what they're doing on a day-to-day, -day, week-to-week -week basis, right? They kind of just fumble the ball. They lose sight of the goal and of the vision sometimes, right? So they'll know they need to be posting. They'll know that they need to be setting calls. They'll know that they need to be uh, setting systems and automations in their business. And that action itself of setting systems needs to take case, needs to take place on a recurring and weekly basis as well. So they know how to do all the things, but they're not being held accountable to the things that they know they should be doing at the given time. So I would say that's the biggest mistake is inconsistencies and being held accountable to the plan. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely, I agree. I, I think, I think what he's saying too is like just building, stacking those new habits. You get what I'm saying? Cause a lot of times, you know, if, if you're not making the money that you want to make, of course you need the right strategy, you need the right frameworks, but you need the right habits. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And a lot of times, like what I'll see is, when we start having, you know, clients like, you know, bring in an additional 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 dollars within like 90 days. I help a lot of women, right? So like, you know, 90 like 97% of our clientele are women. They start making money. They want to start people pleasing other people. They get they they lose sight of the vision. So I would say is just stay in focus. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Understanding that like you got to pay attention to the season that you're in too. You get what I'm mm. saying? Like serve the people that you need to serve. It's not your uh, responsibility to serve everybody that's outside of your vision. You know what I'm saying? So that was that's one thing that I see. Like when when I, when when clients start growing and they start growing their business, then they feel like they have to start doing additional things. And it's like no, like let's replicate the uh, uh, the successful actions, right? Stay focused on that, and then outside of the business, man, like. Go, go hang out with your kids, go hang out with your spouse, travel, do the things that you love to do, you know, but keep, keep the simple, keep the business simple. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I don't know, I think like when people are showing up online, like there's so many different channels available right now, like places that you could be. And like you said, like, you know, the vision needs to be focused. Um, so like there's YouTube, there's podcasts, there's Instagram, there's TikTok, there's short form, there's long form. Which of like these marketing channels have you guys noticed has the biggest ROI in terms of turning those views into maybe clients and paying yeah. customers? And do you have any tips, tips and tricks to kind of optimize that? So, yeah. Harry, do you want to start? Yeah, most definitely. Um, and she remember what she said, guys. She said the highest conversion. OK, that can turn those views into clients. So it's not necessarily how many views, right? But it's out of those views, what can we get on the back end as far as a, a return on investment? 
And what I see is like all of those platforms are good. You know what I'm saying? But what are we doing on those platforms? The long form video content are is the piece of content that is always going to give you the highest conversion, you know, um, as far as like your return on investment. And this is why think about business is just relationships, right? Like acquiring clients, cold traffic, warm traffic, hot leads, it don't matter. All of this relationships, right? And what, what we want to do is we want to make sure that these leads are spending enough time with us so that we are creating, you know, trust, belief, overcoming objections around the offer, around the problem that you solve, right? And it's really hard um, to deliver all of that in a 30 second reel, right? In, in a 60 second reel repeatedly over and over, right? So having your prospects spend a little bit more time with you on a podcast or a YouTube video or an Instagram live or a TikTok live or a Facebook like, hey, listen, you serve, if you serve, if you got clientele that's over the age of 35, definitely Facebook too, you know, mm -hmm. but that longer form content, you know, that's, you know, two minutes or, or longer um, can, you know, bridge the gap between taking a, a lead, you know, seven months to convert, or maybe we can get them to convert in seven weeks and we can get them to convert in seven days, you know what I'm saying? So having that type of content on whichever channel that you're, um, find a channel to go all in on. And then, you know, I recommend finding a channel to go all in on and then having that long form content on that page that'll definitely get you the highest ROI. Awesome. Yeah, I, I, I definitely agree with that. I think that the big pillar would be long form. That's going to be the YouTube, that's going to be the podcast, et cetera. And what I found from my own personal experience is that when you do the YouTubes and you do the podcast, ultimately, you said it best, they're connecting with you. They're trusting you. They're building that relationship with you. I also believe that you can have that same effect happen in short form content, but it just needs to be produced the right way so that your audience can build trust with you. I tell my coaches all the time that you're selling trust at the end of the day. People will pick you over somebody else who looks exactly like you, has the same physique, the nice glutes, the nice chest, whatever it is. They look just like you. So why would they choose you over somebody else? Well, they trust you more, right? And I believe an easy way to build trust on the internet is to talk to your audience and know their challenges better than they know them. That way, when you solve the challenge for them, you come up and you show up as the authority, right? Yeah. So build the trust, position yourself as the authority, and continue to do that. Double down on that because that's going to be the deciding factor. And I believe that's going to, the trust overall is going to be the best return on investment, whether that's in a short form podcast or, or YouTube, if somebody can get a sense of your vibe and your connection through the camera, then you, you gain a little bit more of their trust. Right. Yeah. And so you got their attention. Yeah, most definitely. As far as like charging, because like one thing that we really focus on is like we, we help like when clients come to us, we help them package a, a offer between a thousand and three thousand dollars. And from my experience is when you start to increase that price, the buying decision from the prospect is different. Right. So it's just like thinking about it like this. Right. Like if you're dating for marriage. OK, like before, you know, you make a commitment to somebody, they need to be able to spend a, a good amount of time with you. Right. You know, dating. Uh, we're going out, we're talking on the phone, we're FaceTime, we're spending a good amount of time with each other, right? So you want to make sure that that prospect is, if that prospect is dating for marriage too, they think the same way. I'm not going to watch three reels from you and make a decision to get into this, you know, committed relationship. I need to see a little bit more so that I feel trust. Um, so I have trust, like, like Ruben said, I have trust that you can lead me because as the coach and the trainer, you are the leader in that relationship, you know? So as you increase the price, I would definitely consider having things like a, a podcast or YouTube or just keeping it simple and just going live, you know, uh, frequently, you know, on whatever uh, platform. I like yeah, that can analogy. I add to that real quick? Because that, that was so good. It's, it's short form trustworthy content. Right. So if you don't have a YouTube or a podcast and that feels a little daunting, I wouldn't say, hey, go start one. Right. It would be, yeah. hey, take a step back and figure out what your challenge are currently what your clients are currently going through right now and speak to them. Give them coaching and at like your face to face or across 
the coffee table with them so that they can actually feel you. And short form pieces of content like that, where it's trust building done over a period of time, now people can come to your page and binge watch what you got mm -hmm. going on and trust you even more, right? So just yeah, like well. just like Harry said, they got to spend some time with you. Mm -hmm. Make the micro commitment with the short form content so that they can now binge watch everything with you. Now they're spending time with you and creating a bond with you. Definitely. That's awesome. That's a great piece of advice. What like what do you think are some examples of ways to build that really trust heavy short form content? Like do you have any yeah. example to kind of help illustrate that that point for people? At? Yeah, I would say work on your storytelling, right? Mm -hmm. And also work on your analogies because that's how people learn. And if you're going to be a coach and you're trying to teach people something, uh, that's why I, I immediately brought up the analogy between fitness and business at the beginning because they're parallels and people can understand that, right? So um, with a fitness coach, understand your audience, understand what they're going through and create that story so that they can see that you truly understand what they're going through. And you're not just talking about it on a surface level. No, you truly and deeply understand what that mom is going through or what that guy, how come that guy every single weekend, he fumbles a, fumbles a ball on the weekends, but on Monday he gets back on track, right? So knowing the core elements of what your clients are going through and speaking to that, almost like you're on a FaceTime call, with a buddy, but also giving them stern coaching because you do need to show up as a coach, that will hit. I believe that will just hit through the wall that they probably have up. And so you can hit them at, at their core. Okay. That makes okay. sense. Um, so moving on to kind of like maybe a big picture question. Um, so a lot of people think that, you know, having a high follower count equals, you know, a successful business, but I'm not so sure that's true. So I'd really like to hear what you guys think about like how the size of someone's following should impact their strategy. Um, yeah, most definitely. Um, I would say focus more so on audience building instead of mm -hmm. like a follow. You get what I'm saying? Right. Cause if you're clear on your niche, then you want to focus on building an audience of people that fit that, you know, avatar, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So sometimes what a lot of people will do is, you know, they'll look at like um, some of these fitness influencers out here and they'll see they have these large followings, right? And, you know, people like engaging, um, you know, on their, uh, on their pieces of content and things like that. So they think that they have to mock that. But what we have to, the conversation that we need to have is, are you a fitness influencer or are you a fitness professional? Because the objective is different. You get what I'm saying? That fitness influencer may post, you know, funny content, entertaining content, you know, um, you know, twerking and stuff like that. Not saying there's anything wrong with that. But if it's not speaking to solving a problem for a specific person, you're going to get people to follow. If you help busy moms and you twerking and stuff like that, you may get, you know, a lot of followers. But there may be some guys on there that just come to your page to just watch you. They don't have no intentions on buying. You get what I'm saying? So I would I would focus more so nothing wrong with having like a large audience. Right. But first reverse engineer it, mock a successful business model. <laughs> right. You know, and then grow an audience from there. Right. Because at the end of the day, you know, you could have a small some of my all of like I would say a higher like 90 percent of my, my my clients have um you know under ten thousand followers you get what i'm saying and they see like really really good stuff with their business it's because we uh they they follow a blueprint that has a successful business model and then they start building up their audience makes a lot of sense ruben do you have anything to add to that yeah i would say um your following depends on well you, you have to think about what the goal is at the moment right is your goal to build a following or is your goal to make money? If your goal is to make money, you need to make sure that you have the business principles in place to make money. And you know exactly how to execute that flawlessly, right? So if your goal is, I want to make $6,000 this month, right? The strategy for making $6,000 would be different from the strategy of growing an audience. Now, ha does having a large audience matter? Is that significant? Yes. It does matter. It's 100% significant, but it's not the main thing. 
the main thing that most coaches want is they want to be online. They want to be rid of any debt. They want to have some source of some sense of freedom. And they also want to be in control over their money, right? Having a following does matter, but it's not the main thing. So I think that if you know what your goal is, you can adjust your activities to hit the goal. Now, the reason why I say the following is still significant is because it's a symbol, right? And symbols do matter in life. If I went to LA Fitness or your local gym and I saw, before even talking to anybody, I saw a really in-shape personal trainer and I saw a personal trainer that wasn't as in shape as the other guy, but the person that wasn't as in shape is smarter than the guy who is in shape, right? Without even talking to them, I would pick the guy that is in shape. Why? Because he has a symbolism of being in shape. And in my mind, he's already won the battle, right? So I'm, I'm just naturally going to go to him. But does that matter? To some extent, yeah. But the guy who may not be as big or jacked, he, he's book smart and he knows what he's doing still, right? So symbolism matters, but also knowing the process matters as well. Um, I, I would say aim for both, aim for both, because you can't lose it if you continue to work for growing your following and also you aim for making money as well. Just know that the activities are different. And as long as you're doing the right activity with, with the right vertical, you'll be okay. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about systems. Um, how much time do you guys advise other coaches should be putting into their like social media content per week? Because this isn't something that just happens, I imagine. Like this is a system you build into your days, your weeks, your months. And I want to hear more about how you guys approach that and how much time people should be setting aside for that. Um, Ruben, you want to start on that one? Yeah, daily. You should be working on the business and putting systems in place daily to a degree, right? So anytime you think about something, you should probably have a notepad on your phone and you should have a running list so that when you get a moment to do some work, you know where to start from. So you always should be placing systems or thinking about your business and thinking about your systems on an everyday basis. Um, you should be creating content. So like, would you keep a list on your phone then ongoing of like content ideas? So like you're always oh, yeah. keeping that balance so that when you have a minute, you're like, okay, I can actually film this right now because I'm going to the gym later sort of thing. Not even film it right now, but jot it down right now so that you can film it later, right? Because I get my best ideas when I'm working out and when I'm in the shower. So I'm not always going to have like my camera equipment with me at that current moment, but I will write it down so that when I get a chance to create some content later that day or the next day, I'm ready and I know exactly what I should be creating. But you should always be creating content throughout the day. So like I record all my conversations. I typically record all my meals throughout the day, but I have times and, and, and systems in place so that I'm not spending all my time editing the content right then and there, right? Yeah. Things go into a full folder, they get looked at at a certain time and they get executed at a certain time. So when you get more structured with your day to day time and how you utilize your time, Implementing more and better systems in your business and in your life will come second nature because now you're using your time more effectively. That makes sense. And then yeah. I guess at a different level, once you have maybe additional resource, you could also offload some of that to an editor or a third party who can help you with that aspect. But as long as you're always planning for the content, thinking about it and kind of keeping that in order, um, that makes a lot of sense. Harry, yeah. do you have anything to add or um, your point of view on the question? Yeah, most definitely. You know, um, you got to look at this as, you know, do you want to improve the skill of marketing? Do you want to be, you know, create better high converting content? Right. So that's the first decision that you got to that you got to make is actually wanting to develop that skill, because now your brain is always going to be trying to think of, you know, ideas Right. Being creative, like he said, like when I'm training too, when I'm training, that's why I'm like, I'll, I'll put the weights down. I'm put, you know, going my notes, you know what I'm saying? So that's because it's top of mind. You get what I'm saying? Now, as far as getting the content out, I mean, it's so many different ways to do it. Right. <laughs> Weekly, you know, you can do it monthly. Right. You can do a whole content day, you know, um, at the end of the month or at the beginning of the month. Right. Um, I like to reverse engineer. I like to start with the longer form, right? And then, 
you know, chop it up from there. So like I'll take, you know, I'll do a, a, a live or a YouTube video and then I'll pass it off to my assistant and she'll take the time stamps and then we'll pass it off to my video editor. You can find a video editor on Fiverr, guys, that chop up a video for 35 bucks, 40 bucks, right? Like it's not expensive, but the most important thing is having an outline of what you're saying in that long form pieces of content so that the short form makes sense, right? We want to get a full thought out. We want the, the, the pieces of content to move them to the next stage so that you can have a conversation and eventually get a call. You get what I'm saying? So I would say, I would say, look at the data. Like if you have, look at the clients that you've enrolled from social media that you got from word of mouth, look at the clients that you enroll from social media and look at how you actually acquired them. Did they come from a live? Did they come from a carousel? Did they come from an IG story and repeat successful actions, right? At this stage in your business, if you want to get to six figures, multi six figures, seven figures, it's all about repeating successful actions actions and getting better at those actions. So that's what I would say. Cool. So I think the high level takeaways, it doesn't matter so much, you know, when you're doing it, as long as you have a system to do it consistently, Most it's definitely. more about consistency over perfection. Most definitely. Great tips guys. So on the systems theme, so as we know, like the landscape of everything has changed a lot this year with AI. Like, you know, we have chat GPT, we have a lot of different tools that help with editing that help with like photo video, you name it, like there's a lot of AI innovation happening right now. So what are some of the tools that people can uh, leverage that maybe you use to help alleviate kind of their, their work on the back end with doing some of these marketing things, whether that's writing or editing, what kind of tools should people be using? Yeah. Mm. Um, the easiest thing and the most unused tool is the scheduler feature in Instagram, right? So people are inconsistent with posting. I would say map out what you're posting, map out the attraction pieces of content you want to put out, map out the trust building content you want to put out, map out the enrollment types of content that you want to put out and then schedule it out. So you don't have any pressure. Once again, no one's going to be marketing your business outside of yourself. The next step to that is throwing some paid ads after that, but that's a different topic, but you need to be marketing your business. And the easiest AI feature that you could use is a scheduling feature in my, in my opinion. Yeah, that's a good first step. I like that a lot. Yeah. Uh, Harry, do you have any tools that you've been utilizing that you think people should be uh, putting into their workflow? Yeah. yeah I, I like what Ruben said, like keeping the main objective, you know, making money. I know a lot of people, you know, use the, uh, the chat GPT, I use it to, to, to get information, right? I'm not a big fan of, you know, putting something in chat GPT and then post, putting it inside a Canva and then using that, right? Cause here's the thing, right? You're gonna, you're gonna, if you do that, you're gonna look like a robot in your content. I'm a real big believer in like thought provoking content, like becoming the thought. If you're a personal trainer or a fitness coach, Tips, fitness tips, weight loss tips, all of those are things are good, but like sharing your perspective, your beliefs, people want to know what your core values are, right? People want to know that you're a, a man or a woman of integrity too, right? So we need more thought leaders inside of the fitness space right now, right? So if you want to use something like chat GPT, use it to get ideas, right? Use it to get topics to talk about and then be a thought leader, be your authentic self inside of your content, right? Mm. That's really cool. Social media can be a very powerful thing, but it could also like hinder you from your success. Right. Mm -hmm. So before you open that app, right, you got to you got to ask yourself first and then you got to remind yourself, do you want to be a producer or do you want to be a consumer? I love that. Couldn't have said it better myself. That's an awesome way to frame it as well. Cool. So that kind of wraps up our questions for now, guys. But where can the people at home find you if they want to learn more about you or what you do or your businesses? Harry, do you want to start? Yeah, most definitely. Um, you can find me on all social media platforms, Harry King Homes, uh, Facebook, Harry King Homes the Third, LinkedIn, Harry King Homes the Third. Um, I also have a, a seven day free course. So if you want to try to land your first, you know, thousand dollar plus online coaching client, I got a seven day free course. It's completely free. Got a bunch of free resources with it. Um, you can visit fitnessempirexcel.com um, and you can get that for free. No charge. Excellent. And Ruben, where can the people at home find you? Yeah, you can find my YouTube channel at Ruben Brooks. You can find our company's business page on Instagram at fitbossblueprint. blueprint. 
Uh, and you can find my personal page at approved by Brooks. So there's three things. You got Ruben Brooks, you got Fit Boss Blueprint, and then you also have approved by Brooks. That's on Instagram. Uh, with if you go to fitbossblueprint.com, you will also see my free masterclass. So you can get that for free as well. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, thanks to both of you for joining us today. We had a great conversation. And for everyone at home, we will see you in the next session.